Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. A very colorful geometry puzzle. Two circles and two semicircles are inscribed in an equilateral triangle with side length 1. Find the ratio of areas orange to red plus green. Awesome. So at this point, you may just want to pause the video and try this problem yourself. Alrighty. Let's get started. Now, we do have the orange circle, which is kind of centered nicely. And we have the two semicircles that are symmetrical. Obviously, if I just find one of them, we'll be good. And the green one sits just on top of the orange one. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and make some important connections here. First connection will be the height of this triangle. Obviously, that's going to help us a lot, right? So we're just going to use that to calculate a couple of things here. Okay, those are the centers. So let's go ahead and call this big R. And let's call this small r. Okay. Awesome. And let's make some connections. First of all, I, I'd like to find the big R. And then I'll go ahead and find small r. So how am I going to do that? Let's see what happens. So because of symmetry, obviously, uh, this is going to be the midpoint. Right? So this uh, length here is the median or the line segment. And we know that... This is the centroid, right? Okay. So centroid is going to divide up the median into two pieces in the ratio of one to two. Therefore, R needs to be one third of the height of this triangle. But what is the height of this triangle? Well, it should be one half here and one half here. And that's a 60 degree angle. And that's a 60 degree angle. And those are 30 degrees. So our height is going to be the longer leg of the 30, 60, 90 triangle, which is root 3 over 2. So if you find one third of root 3 over 2, that's going to give you the big R. So big R is going to be root 3 over 6. Awesome. So we found the biggest radius. Let's go ahead and find the small r. Now, how does the small r found? Well, if you consider the 30, 60, 90 triangle here, the hypotenuse is going to be two times the radius, right? So that's going to be 2r. There you go. We got it. Okay. So that means that if I just add up all these lengths, the two small r plus the r plus the two big r, that's just going to give me the height of the triangle, which is root 3 over 2. But we know the value of uh, big r, so we can go ahead and substitute that. That is just going to be root 3 over 3. And then from here, we're going to be getting an equation. 3 times the small r plus root 3 over 3 is equal to root 3 over 2. And then 3r is going to give us root 3 over 2 minus root 3 over 3. And if you make a common denominator, you're going to realize that this is going to be root 3 over 6. If you divide both sides by 3, then you'll get the small r to be root 3 over 18. Awesome. Okay. So I found the big r. I found the small r. Now is the time to find the radius of the semicircles. Awesome. So let's go ahead and change colors here. Maybe use a blue. Okay. Let's see now what kind of connections can we make? First of all, let's go ahead and connect these two centers. That should help, right? Okay. That's one connection. And then I want to draw a perpendicular line here because I'm going to use that in a little bit. And then another perpendicular here, which means that I'm actually forming a really nice shape here, right? Which is called a trapezoid. Awesome. Now, in this trapezoid, what do we know? Well, we know that this length is x. Let's call that x, okay? This is also x. And then this one here is going to be the big R. So I'm going to call that big R. And this is also big R. We know the value, but I'm just going to substitute that later. I just don't want to write the radical in there. Okay, how about this length here? I want to find the height of this trapezoid. What is the height? Well, to find the height, I'm just going to use the fact that this is a midpoint. So this whole thing is going to be one half. What about the little piece here? Okay, that little piece is actually the shorter leg of this right triangle, which is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Well, if the longer leg is x, the shorter leg would be x divided by root 3, which is equivalent to root 3x over 3. 
So this piece here is going to be root 3 over 3x, this small piece. So the piece that I'm looking for, the height of the trapezoid, okay, is just going to be, let's call that h. h is going to be 1 half minus square root of 3, square root of 3 over 3, x. That's the height of my trapezoid. Now, how does the height help me? Well, I can just draw a parallel segment here, which is actually going to turn this into a rectangle, right? And then, now I can take advantage of take advantage of this. This is x. This is going to be big R minus x. Now I do have a right triangle. Let's go ahead and shade that right triangle that I'm going to be using in my calculations. Awesome. That is a right triangle. So let's go ahead and write down the Pythagorean theorem for that right triangle. What do I know? Okay. Now I do know that one of the one of the legs is r minus x, so it's going to look like this, r minus x squared, plus the other leg, which is the height, is going to be right here. I'm going to write it as 1 half minus root 3 over 3 times x. So I'm going to be adding those squares, and that's going to equal the hypotenuse squared, but hypotenuse is r plus x, big R. Big R plus x squared. Awesome. All right. So hopefully this is not too confusing. I wanted to use different colors to make it a little clear. Okay, now let's go ahead and use that expression and we know the value of big R here, right? It's right there, root three over six. Let me copy that here so I don't have to go back and forth. That's my big R, that's my small r. Okay, let's go ahead and calculate x here. How do we calculate it? We plug in the expression, but before you do that, do me a favor and just isolate this guy here because you remember the identity that I've been using almost all the time. If you subtract a minus b squared from a plus b squared, you always get, this is what is cool about math, right? You always get 4ab. So this is going to equal 4rx. Now it's a lot easier because you only have to substitute that once. So let's go ahead and do that. Big R is equal to root 3 over 6. If you multiply by 4, you get 2 root 3 over 3 and that'll be multiplied by x. And don't forget the square. Awesome. This is our quadratic equation, and we're going to use it to calculate x, and then we're going to put it all together. Okay? Awesome. So let's go ahead and expand this. This is going to give us 1 fourth minus, if you multiply these two and double, you should be getting root 3 over 3x, plus that should give me 1 over 3 times x squared, and the right-hand side is just going to stay the same. Now, if I go ahead and subtract, that's going to give me 1 over 3x squared minus. So if you subtract 1 times this quantity minus 2 times the quantity, it's going to be like minus 3 times, which means that's just going to be root 3x because it just turns into negative root 3 root 3 over 3, which eventually is going to be negative root 3 of x. Awesome. And then plus one fourth, of course, and the whole thing is equal to zero. Now let's go ahead and multiply everything by 12. So that's going to give me 4x squared minus 12 root 3x plus 3 is equal to zero. Let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula to solve for x. And then we're going to decide which one is the solution, okay? Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared. Okay, b squared is going to be... 144 multiplied by 3, and that's going to be 432, right? 144 times 3. Minus b squared minus 4ac, so 4 times 4 times 3. Awesome. And all over 2 times a, which is 8. Great. Let's go ahead and simplify this. All right. So... 4 times 4 times 3 is going to be 16 times 3, which is 48. So I've got to subtract these numbers, right? And what what is this? Uh, what is that supposed to give me? Uh, 384, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yep. 384 should be a good number. It better be. So because we're going to square root it, or it needs to contain a lot of perfect squares. Awesome. 
All right, what are we going to do now? We have to factor 384. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I believe I can do the 192 times the 2. 192 is 96 times the 2. So now we know that the 2 times 2 is going to give us a 4. That's kind of nice. And 96 can be broken down into 16 and 6, and 16 is another perfect square. Nice. I don't need to do the whole factor 3 because all I need is perfect square. So I do get a 16 times 4 from here, which is 64. In other words, 384 can be written as 64 times 6. Okay? That's just a fact. Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead and write that. Root uh, 12 root 3 plus minus. Now, when you write it that way, obviously you're going to square root this expression and the square root of 64 is going to be 8. So this is going to give you 8 times the square root of 6 all over 8. Now, as you can see, everything can be divided by 4. Let's go ahead and do that and split up our expression. So our expression is going to be after division by 4. It's going to be 3 root 3 plus 2 root 6 divided by 2. Let's call that x1. And x2 is going to be 3 root 3 minus 2 root 6 all over 2. Now, you might be asking, like, which one are we going to pick, right? Well, go back to the expression and see what x looks like, right? What does x look like to you? Well, it's definitely less than 1 half. It's even less than half of 1 half, which is 1 fourth. So I would guess it's probably less than 0 0.2-ish, you know? Somewhere in between, I mean, 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. So it's going to be a small number, as you can see. But look at that. Look at this number. Isn't that gigantic? I mean, even without the radicals, it's like 3 plus 2 divided by 2. It's like 2.5. Way too large. Forget it. So that's our solution. That's our radius. But we're not done yet. Why? Because we still have to find those ratios. Okay, awesome. Let's go ahead and bring down the other numbers. So root, we, we have the root 3 over 6, right? And the root 3 over 18. Let me go back and check to make sure we got it right. Okay, awesome. So the smaller one is obviously the smaller r, and this is the bigger r. Okay, awesome. So we got all the three radii. What we need to do is go ahead and set up the ratio. And what ratio we're looking for? Basically, the ratio we're looking for is going to be the area of the orange, right, divided by red plus green. Well, the two halves... The two red halves will make a whole. So very basically, we're just calculating the area of a circle every time. So that's kind of nice, right? The two halves will make a whole. Nice. So what's the area of the orange? And by the way, we can kind of write it this way too. We can write it like pi big R squared divided by pi x squared plus pi small r squared. But the pi is going to cancel out. So what I'm looking for is actually big R squared divided by x squared plus small r squared. Let's go ahead and simplify that. And trust me, that'll be cumbersome. So I'm going to save you some of the trouble. So basically what we need to do is this quantity squared divided by x, which is 3 root 3 minus 2 root 6 over 2 squared plus the small r, which is root 3 over 18 squared. And... According to my calculations, just kidding, I didn't calculate this right. Of course, this is time consuming, right? What is Wolfram Alpha for? All right, anyways. So after some calculations, you will see that the ratio is 6,201 plus 4,374 4, multiplied by square root of 2 all over 4,658. So that's the ratio of areas we've been looking for and we got the answer. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like and subscribe and see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.